Hi beautiful people, my name is Bridget and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all having an awesome day. And today it's a rainy, cloudy day outside, so we're sitting on the floor again. I don't know why. When it, I feel bad or it's like rainy and cloudy outside, I'm like, I'm going to sit right in front of a window, get some natural light going in here on the floor. So that's what we're doing today. Today we're also talking about some makeup in my collection that I never use. Like, I declutter every three months. I keep my collection fresh, like what I'm using. You know, I get rid of a lot what I don't use. And then there's some stuff that I never use. It just sits in my collection regardless. And so we're gonna talk about this stuff. Honestly, this could be a part two if you like it. Give me a thumbs up. Maybe I'll do a part two of this. But today I just wanna talk about some stuff that I never declutter, but never goes on my face. So let's get started. Real quick before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to my shop, TheOpenCrypt.com. It's my small business, all done by me. I have TheOpenCrypt.com. I also have some stuff on Etsy. Etsy's been a lot of work trying to build it up, but, you know, I'll leave the link down below. I don't never know what to say for these things. Um, but anyways, first makeup product that I never use, I would also love to know something you don't ever use, but you don't get rid of down below, is white setting powders. I always have at least one or two translucent setting powders in my collection that are just white. Okay, I am someone who packs my under eyes with powder, like with a sponge. You know, you do your foundation, you put a concealer on, and I pack powder under my under eyes because I hate creasing. I need it to last all day long. Um, but I can't use white setting powders. I'm a very fair complexion. If I'm not using white setting powders, think it makes me a white cast. Who is using white setting powders? If you do, I'm glad it works for you, but every single time I use any kind, I don't care what brand it is, this one happens to be Anastasia, it's called translucent, it's not translucent. Anytime I use any brand of translucent setting powder that just happens to be white, because it's supposed to be see-through, you're not supposed to see it on your face, it makes me white cast and dry. So I keep this one because I found it for $12.99 at TJ Maxx, and I think it's good for Halloween looks. But I never used it on my face. And when's the last time I did a Halloween look? Like, I didn't even do one last year. It was, like, the year before that. So, I keep one just in case. But I don't use it. You know? Like, I just don't know. Something about white setting powders makes me dry. And I'm already dry. And then it makes my under eyes look stark white. And that's just not the vision. Because whereas I am emo, I am not goth in that aspect. Next up, three of the next products. We're going to go ahead and talk about all the Jeffree Star stuff that I never use. This is embarrassing because I have several of these. I have decluttered several Jeffree Star palettes from my collection, but a lot of these big, bulky box things I don't use. These big, thick blood, the blue blood, the, the blood sugar, the conspiracy palette with Shane Dawson, all these big palettes, whereas they're great quality and I love them. The color schemes are beautiful. This one's blue blood. I never reach for them because they're clunky and they're in like my big mega drawer, like my big palette drawer that I never touch. So these mega palettes are big, they're beautiful, the colors are fantastic, the quality is so good, and they kind of remind me of a coffin, which is everything. But they're bulky, therefore I never reach down there to go fumble through these big clunky things to use. So whereas they're amazing, I, I just don't because they're big and they're clunky. You know, it's just, it's too much work. Like, can I just get a simple, like, the, the palette needs to be thin. Just make a thin palette for me, please. There's no need to make it so and expensive. Other Jeffree Star things. The Magic Concealer. I never use this thing. Honestly, this is my second one. I bought it when it originally came out to review it. The color was wrong. I gave it away. And then I got this one. Uh, sometime when I was in Orlando, I had the Morphe store that were on sale when he was, like, discontinuing this stuff with them. So, this is... C5, Cool Tone 5, and um, I never use it because I feel like it sets really quickly and it's a little drying under my under eyes. It is not the most amazing full coverage concealer, like you're flawless, you need nothing else with this. It's like a nice medium, can be a little bit buildable to more of a full coverage. However, it's dry under my under eyes and it sets very, very quickly. I'm someone who likes to put my concealer down, blend it out beautifully, then go ahead and set with powder afterwards. With this, you gotta move super quick. And that's just not the kind of vibe I'm trying to have with my makeup. I'm trying to have my makeup on in a nice relaxing manner, listen to a podcast, not be panicking because this is drying too quickly. So that's why I never use this one, to be honest. It just dries too quickly. It's a little dry under my under eyes. It makes me look a little bit crepey, crepe, crepe, even though I've never eaten a crepe in my life. But I know what they look like. It looks like this under my eyes, but the coverage is good. So it's not terrible. But like I have other ones I like more, like the Shape Tape. That dries a little quickly, but the coverage is amazing. And the Shape Tape Creamy gives me all that and it's extra blendable. So there's other things I like more than that one. Also, the doe foot on that thing is kind of pointy. I don't know why, but it is. The last Jeffree Star things, well, there's two. So let's do them separately. 
<laughs> four of these things on this list are all Jeffree Star. Mm, this thing, the Liquid Frost. This is in the shade Frost Bites. Um, I do have a review of all these Jeffree Star things on my channel. You can look them up and see how I like them, like, trying them on and stuff. The pump on this is Bull. Okay, people were like, you just don't know how to use the pump on it. And then he did a video with Trixie Mattel after this came out, and she couldn't figure out how to get the pump to work properly. The pump on it's not good. It's a kind of a cute packaging design. But also, this doesn't sit very well on top of my foundation. And if I use a liquid highlighter, typically it's just going to go on my body. And even then, I have other ones that are just like easy to use pumps and stuff that I would rather use. This is a confusing pump on it. And like, it's a little... It's a little clumpy for me. It's not the most perfect, beautiful, creamy, silky highlighter in the world. And I just never reach for it, especially because the pump gives me problems. And it never sucks up like the right amount. Lastly, in the Jeffree Store category, because I was going to clump this one with the other one. But it's a total mess in itself, and I hate it. But for video purposes, I always keep it in because it was kind of pricey. And because, like, if anybody wants me to compare with other highlighters, I can. But no one asks for that, ever. I just keep it because it's the Jeffree Star Supreme Frost. This one's in Wet Dream. It's dry. He's like, oh my god, it has this pressed pearl in there. To make it high end. It's supposed to look like super glassy on your skin. It's just dry. It's just dry. I don't know. Like, I'm not sitting here talking badly about Jeffree Star. I love so many of his products. These are just the ones I don't use. I know it seems like a lot bragging on him right now. It's not meant to be. But this is just never. It's never. Like, it's pretty and shiny, right? But it feels dry. Like, like powdery powdery dry spread out all over my hand here like it gives a little bit of sheen but for the price tag like his other skin frosts his original skin frost do so much more for me than that they have a beautiful metallic and sheen to the skin and they come in way more product per the price this is just like a it, it just seems like a gimmick at most and then it's glittery but you could have just had the skin frost in that beautiful overly highlightery fashion for less money beautiful texture everything it just it's just a little sheen like I can get a dollar store highlighter that does the same thing that's it ragging on Jeffree Star stuff sorry there was a couple of those I just never reached for I was looking at my highlighters today like because I was gonna buy another magnetic palette and separate some stuff and put them you know depot some stuff and I was looking in that drawer I was like there's so many of these things I just never use that's what made me think of the video anyways next up is glitter glue I only have one I've had this for years it is from Too Faced but when am I ever using a loose glitter? Like, I don't. Like, I don't. Like, I want to be that bitch who is, like, using these beautiful, chunky glitters on her eyes. But when I think of the cleanup process at the end of the night for it, I could just be that other bitch who doesn't do that, you know? Um, so it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't seem appealing to me. Like, I want to be that girl. I want to be that super... My phone's talking to me for some reason. I want to be that one who is extra and looks super alternative and beautiful and has that amazing eye makeup. But do I need glitter glue and glitter glued to my eyelids? I'm already gluing on lashes just to the end of the night be wiping and wiping and have sparkles all over myself because I can't get it all the glitter off. And also glitter's bad to put down the drain like when you wash it in the sink. I don't know. I guess I'm just not that person, but I aim to be that extra. Next up is pot eyeliners. I have a lot of these in a lot of different colors. This one is Lethal Cosmetics Hurts because it's a beautiful grungy kind of mustardy brown color. It's a beautiful color. I have a lot of these in different colors just in case I need those colors for my eyeliner. Like today I have a yellow eyeliner on. This is a City Colors one. It was like three bucks and it worked just fine. I don't know why I need these high-end pot liners. You have to use a brush to apply. Like I'm not likely to use a brush to apply my eyeliner unless it's a felt tip brush on my eyeliner pen that I'm using. I just have these just in case I needed that vibe but when do I ever need that vibe? Like today I did a yellow one. I'm more likely to do yellow one than like all these shades of blues and greens that I own. I don't know. I, I aim to be the person who does these fun things with these fun products but I'm not. Like I'm just, I'm not. Like it's, it's sometimes, you know, I like to relax. I like to do my face. I have to do something a little extra like today. I did a little yellow wing moment. Most days that ain't gonna happen, you know? Next up, this one's a little bit different because I could use these and I love how they look. 
And it's not a diss on the product and it's not that I'm lazy. It is the fact that I'm a YouTuber that makes this a little more complicated. I never use single shadows. These are two of the new ones that Colourpop came out with. It is so quiche. I had this original one, but it was way more green. This one's more like a like a, a green brown kind of reflect. It was a prettier color. Like it's the new version of it. Then I also have Tassel, which is like a white one because I love an icy white shade. And I, I have these new ones. But I don't use single shadows. I feel like there's something about being a YouTuber is I need to list what's on my face in my description box of every video because people ask and I hate when other people don't do it. If I'm looking at someone, I'm like, oh, their lashes are beautiful in their video and they don't link them. I'm kind of upset, <laughs> you know, but I don't feel like asking. But so I link everything like usually it's like stand out on my face in the description. And that's why I don't use single shadows is because I feel like it's just easier for me to list a palette and say this is the palette that I used on my face. And it's also easier for like, you know, Instagram to be like, I just used this palette on my face. This is what's on my face. It seems like less a process of explaining what I did on my face. And then also, usually the palettes I have have a beautiful cohesive color scheme. And I just use that. Like I just do I want to like, oh, let me use some of these shades from this palette, some of these shades from this palette, and then throw a single shadow on? I'm just not that person. Like, I I, mean, I could be, because they're beautiful. Like, the colors are beautiful, and I have them, obviously. I have a several of them. But, uh, so far in my life, I haven't reached that peak where I'm like, I don't care if I have to list 100 things in my description box. I'm going to use this really unique combination of eyeshadows. I'm just not. I'm not that person yet, y'all. Next up... I did a declutter video a couple months ago of like decluttering a bunch of my lashes and stuff, but I have the majority of my lashes in my collection I don't wear. This is just an example. These are the paint splashes in red by Glamlight. Just an example of lashes that I keep in my collection that I've tried on but don't wear and then keep anyways. Like I will say I have small, like two or three little buckets of lashes that I just... <laughs> I don't wear like there's some and I have a whole drawer and out of this whole drawer of lashes there's probably three pairs that I'm currently wearing like you know switching between like the three but I have so many lashes that I never wear but I don't want to get rid of because what if I need that vibe but again when do I ever need a certain vibe of eyelashes I feel like the whole video is like I keep this just in case I keep in case I get in that crazy mood which doesn't happen you know if I get in a crazy mood my hair is changing not necessarily me using a unique eyeliner or <laughs> a really dry highlighter, a bulky palette, or like several palettes on my eyes at one time and single shadows. It just doesn't happen. And like, I feel like I'm very iffy with lashes. Like I'll wear a pair to death. And then by the time I buy a replacement of that style that I loved and I wore to death, you know, I don't like it anymore. Like the new pair, even though they're exactly the same style, they don't look the same. They just don't look the same. Like, I've had so many pairs of Lil Lily Lashes Miami. Some of them look beautiful, and then I'll buy a replacement for them, and I hate them on my eyes. I don't know what it is. I know they're exact same. They're just factory-made lashes. They're going to be the same. But when I put them on, they don't hit the same. So then I end up with tons of lashes that just don't do it correctly for me anymore. Lastly, this is hard to admit, I am happy with my complexion. You know, I don't want to be tan. I'm covering my skin in ink so I don't have to see my skin that gets tan because it just doesn't feel right for me like my skin is very uneven like I have uh, tan pale tan pale I just want to be you know even that's my whole thing I don't care if I'm tan I don't care if I'm pale I want to be even my face and my neck and my chest and my body are usually always pale that's just how my skin complexion is and I don't intend on changing it. like I don't want to be in a tanning bed hurting my skin I'd rather just cover in ink and if I look a little uneven you're just gonna see the ink that seems better to me. So I never wear SPF primers. This one's from Dermalogica is Invisible Physical Defense with SPF 30. And I also just bought a Beekman <laughs> uh, from Ulta. I bought a Beekman 1802 primer with goat milk and SPF in it. That one I'm more likely to use because it has goat milk in it. But I never use SPF. I don't. Again, that's why my hands and my arms are more tan. is because I don't use SPF on anything, especially not my face. I'm just too lazy. I'd rather choose a nice moisturizing primer for the day. But I know it's bad that I skip SPF, but I want to be evenly coated. Like, I want my skin to be even. So, I don't know. Maybe I should let my face get tan, but that's bad for your skin. 
So I don't really know how I feel about that. I just want to be even. That's all I want in my life is to be even, but I never wear SPF, which is why my hands look like this. <laughs> so uh, that's something I need to work on personally, but I'm admitting to myself that I never use it. Anyways, you guys, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I feel like the SPF thing went a little far. Like, I don't want to be a tan person. It sounds weird to say, but I just want my skin to be even, really. I just want to be even, and my body's never going to get tan because I'm always covered in black drapey dresses, you know? But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this was a little bit relatable to you in some fashion because I feel like everyone has something in your collection they never use, but they don't get rid of either. You know, I spent the money on it. I'm going to try to use it eventually, even if it's not now, but... Thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Have a great day.